Greetings. Honey from Old River Hard Goods again. Today's video, as the title says, I'm going to talk about opening day at the Salisbury Flea Market. And we're doing things a little differently because I'm going to show you just a little bit of the flea market uh, action. And then uh, I'm going to do the flea market finds. And then we're going to look at some of the wooden planes I got in a little more detail. So, always good to mix things up, I guess. So if you find that interesting, just stick around and maybe I might even learn something. Here we are opening day. Well, it turned out to be right pretty. How crappy the weather's been. Birds make a lot of noise. Not many vendors, but it's not too bad. So we shall see. Well, this weekend, first weekend in April, marked the start of the summer flea market season around here. And, uh, I made a trip up on Saturday, got a few things, nothing real great. And the Sunday, well, Sunday things really cranked up. So, part one, planes, Stanley, number three, made in England, in the box. Needs just a little bit of detailing. A straight rabbit, two-toned, looks to be user-made. Not one, but two side rabbit planes. One's a... Oh, an Eastman. I don't have my glasses on right now, so I can't say for sure. This one does have uh, fence holes in it, but yeah, what are you going to do, right? You don't see them. Uh, this is a Benson, I believe, Albany round that was modified, possibly as a table plane or maybe a gunstock plane. A B Froggett, 18th century English, large want to say five eighths or so maybe three quarters a center bead plane um, this is a cove plane uh, this is a union factory this is an oswego oswego and i can never say that right side bead not in too bad a shape and a pair of uh all around match set by Fields, I think it is of Nottingham, England. And last up in this area is a spoke shave. It's English marked. Can't really read the name, but gonna need a little bit of work, but not too bad. And good one shaves ain't been showing up too often. So this is the first blast. Stay tuned for more. Second part of this little adventure is massive 
Oh, I guess it's a 14-inch draw knife. Don't see a maker's mark on it. Uh, one hand is a little loose, and somebody did attack it, but yeah, we'll get it looking pretty. That edge is a little on the rough side. A three-pound plum sledgehammer marked in Nevada for some reason. A little two-pound sledgehammer. Somebody had the paint black. Got to figure out what's going on with that. And a nice little turning saw. Blade's got a little funky on it, but mm, frame's a little banged up, but beat, so it's probably English, but can't say for sure. So that's the second part of this little adventure, and one more to go. And last up, we got a Stanley number one, the eight inch tri miter square, and he's a little cleaning. Miller Falls, Machinist Protractor, and Zep Gauge, not too bad a shape. Starrett 604R hook rule, a little uh, 604. Oh, no, yeah, 604R. Um, two inch rule. Another one of these uh, gauges, which I got a bunch of, but it's one of those things they don't sell, they don't sell, they don't sell, and then they start to sell. So we'll see. The Starrett, uh, 12 inch combination square, pretty good shape, except for the center finder head, which needs a little TLC and a little polishing. Uh, this is a signed, although I can't read it, maybe you can, uh, 18th century tri, yeah, 19th century tri-square, I'm awake, hey, I get up at 4.15 for these market runs, so spare me the comments, eh, it looks like a mahogany handle, gonna need some serious cleaning on it, but play don't look too bad under all that, a Lufkin depth gauge, all three rods, in the uh, original box, a one and a half inch brace auger bit. Uh, no use, no maker's name that I can see so far. Might might be a few, but hard to say. Uh, Stanley 69-122 scratch all. Nothing fancy, but it works. And probably the find of the day is this uh, Miller and Son. Uh, from what I've been able to gather, because there's not a whole lot of information, uh, 1850s, uh, located at 309 South 5th Street in Philadelphia. Supposedly a couple different addresses have shown up for them, but pretty uncommon. And to be told, I did buzz the faces off just a little bit to See what's under there, you read it a little better, but as far as oyster and clam knives go, that's a pretty rare one. I saw one listed now, admittedly that one was made from a file. Somebody's asking a buck and a half for it, I don't think I'll get a buck and a half for this one, but I will make some money on it. So, anyways, off to the races. Okay, and on with the detailed look at some of these planes. Well, I went and cleaned up a few of the planes that I showed in the first segment there. And if you want to know how I did it, if you're new to the channel, there's a link down in the description to my plane cleaning video for on screen looks like this. And first up on our little journey here this is three quarter inch center bead plane by Benjamin Froggett uh, there's a couple different spellings of that he was a Birmingham England plane maker who worked from 1760 to 1780 basically from the French and Indian War through most of the Revolutionary War and this is in decent shape. Uh, usual patina on the body, not too bad there. Uh, there is some chipping on the front of the sole. This is not boxed or unboxed. This side's got some roughness and wear, but that side is chipped. 
few bits of wax left on there. It is the original wedge. And the iron isn't signed. Yeah, it's got a little bit of pit to it, but again, 18th century plane, 18th century maker, you know, and it's going to have some wear and what have you, but this is not a very commonly found plane by uh, any of the English makers. I can't tell you, I've seen too many uh, center beads at all, so... This is the first one of the batch. Next up, we have a match pair of number 12 hull and round planes. Uh, these were made by William Heels, H-I-E-L-D-S. I said Fields in the uh, Discovery video. But he was a Nottingham maker who worked from 1830 until 1885. So it's kind of hard to say exactly when these guys would have landed in there. But, and, you know, they're in decent shape. Both wedges have some wear. Bodies are you know, stained, dinged. Soles aren't too bad. Nothing screaming about much on there. This one's got a couple light scratches, but. Back's got a little character. These guys are set at York pitch, which is a little steeper than your regular blade mounting, and they're also skew. Only a couple of the American makers made uh, skew. Uh, the English are a little more common, but did take more time to do and cost a little more to make, so. Another pair of not very common planes either. Next on our little journey is a side rabbit plane made by George Benton. He worked in Chelsea, Massachusetts, but uh, marked some of his planes Boston. And he was active from 1855 until 1872. This one has the C mark and is rated three stars as far as rarity goes. And this one's in decent condition. As you can see, somebody drilled holes for putting a plow plane fence on. Why? Not sure, but such things have been known to happen. Uh, the mouth has been opened a little bit or from wear from use. But it's straight, which is a plus. This is the working side here. A little bit of patina there. The iron, if I remember correctly, is a W Butcher. Eh, not too bad on a couple spots of pitting. Wedge isn't too bad. And you know, side rabbit planes are just not that common at all. I'm lucky if I see one every three, four years. I mean, you know, folks tend to grab them up like snipe bills, and don't ask me, I don't have any snipe bills, because it's been oh, a couple of years since I last had one of those, but you will have this. Next on our list is this David Benson of Albany. Now, in the video, I called it a... Uh, Possibly a rule joint plane or gun stock plane, but I'm think pretty sure now it's a rule joint plane. Why is that? See that scribe circle? I've seen that on other rule joint planes, so that's what I'm going to go with. Benson, of course, is a fairly well-known Albany, New York maker. Worked from 1827 to 1850 by himself with a number of uh, partnerships. And this one's in kind of well-used condition. You see he's got some wear. Now it's open a bit. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So the side's got some deep scrapes and scratches. And wedge is a bit banged up. The iron is short, but it's clean there. And that's a butcher iron. But 
not a very commonly found plane. I wish I had the matching hollow to go with it because rule joint planes are few and far between and match pairs are even less. And last up on our look at these planes for today is this three quarter inch cove or thumbnail plane by uh, H. Chapin Union Factory. Everybody knows who they are. Oh, this one's not, this one's in pretty fairly good shape. Yeah, I'm mumbling here. Um, there's a partially drilled hole on the side, but not a completely drilled hanging hole. Sole's good, except for a couple of scrapes and scuffs. The mouse factory tight. Shot in the back. On here, a spot of paint there, missed. I have to knock that off. You can see the model number there 217. BEM, I'm assuming, is a user mark and doesn't mean bowler missed. Not that they did that. And here we got the iron out, looking nice and clean. Well, I just got some stain and wear, but. Again, these are, I won't say they're uncommon, but it's not a very frequently found plane. You know, if I find one or two a year, I'm doing pretty good. So, anyways, I hope you learned something from all this, and that's it for the plane segment of this video. And that's all for this one, folks. As always, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed my little presentation. And if you like what you're seeing, please hit that subscribe button to be notified when new videos are posted. As always, thanks for watching and bye.